Tuesdays. My name is Kevin, and I'm practicing my belly dancing. With these things, which I just learned, are called zills. Awesome. Um, okay, so today we're going to talk about uh, that and which, and how to use them. Um, so I know this is a common question, and actually this came in to uh, one of, or was in the comments of one of the videos that I posted, the student was asking, how do I know which to use? Um, so, we're going to dive in and take a look. So, very beginning, that is used for restrictive clauses, and which is used for non-restrictive clauses. These are grammar terms, you don't really have to know these, um, it's just good to keep track of, but really, when we use that, we're narrowing the scope. It narrows the scope of the noun that it's describing. So both that and which start a phrase and start a phrase or clause and it modifies a noun. When we have that, it narrows the scope of the noun and it's essential to the meaning of the sentence and which adds extra information. So everything after the which is just nice to know, extra information, but you could remove it and not uh, change the meaning of the sentence. And so that's the key difference here. That is vital, so that and everything after it is vital to the sentence and its meaning, and which is not. So we have uh, two examples here. In 2001, Apple released the iPod that sold for $399. In this sentence, that sold for $399 modifies the noun iPod. And it is narrowing uh, the meaning of this noun. So it's not just any iPod, it's the iPod uh, that sold for $399, a very specific iPod. In this sentence, in 2001, Apple released the iPod, comma, we'll talk about that, which sold for $399. In this sentence, the emphasis on, is on the fact that Apple released an iPod in 2001, and then this information is sort of not essential. It's not necessary, it's just kind of a nice aside. It's, and it's adding information, letting the reader know that this iPod that they released, it sold for $399. Whereas here, we're narrowing the scope. We're narrowing in on a specific type of iPod. Um, and so that is essential. That sold for $399. That information is essential to the sentence. Um, a good way to test to see if you need the information or not is to just take it out of the sentence and see how the sentence sounds. So I have two examples down here. Um, so number three, my favorite national park is Yosemite and period. So I'm going to leave out all of the that which spans uh, 1,190 square miles. So, does that make sense? Does this still hold up? Is this still um, enough information? Does it convey the idea? Yes, my favorite national park is Yosemite. That conveys all the essential information that we need. So what that means is I'm gonna choose to add a comma and choose which, which comes with a comma. So my favorite national park is Yosemite, which spans 1,190 square miles. So a little extra information that we're providing to the reader um, about Yosemite. But really, the essential point here is that uh, Yosemite is my favorite national park. Number four, Mahatma Gandhi openly questioned laws. If we stop there, it makes it sound like Gandhi was an anarchist or um, just questioned any law, regardless of the type of law it was. But that's not what this sentence is trying to convey. Gandhi uh, questioned only a specific type of law. And that means that what comes after uh, the laws is essential. So this phrase, all of this that's modifying laws, is essential for the meaning of the sentence. So we would choose that. Mahatma Gandhi openly questioned laws that instituted injustice. injustice. So we've narrowed the scope of what type of laws we're talking about by using that. Okay, so I mentioned a little bit about commas. Um, when to use them. Use commas with, when there's a non-restrictive phrase, or the phrase is not restrictive, as I wrote right there. Um, so that means you're using it with which. Sometimes in sentences, you're not using that or which, so this is a little bonus feature. 
Um, you have some other pronoun in there. So for example, in these sentences, we have who. And there's no way to know what is restrictive and what is not restrictive unless we look at the comma and pay attention to the comma. So in the first one, I love people who are curious is a restrictive phrase. So that means I only like people who are curious, that particular sort of strand of person. Um, whereas two is more general. I love people. And I love the fact that people are curious. So it's this idea that people can be curious, but overall, I love people. All right. I, this is a lot of information to take in. There's a lot going on on this board. So if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. Uh, put a comment down below and I will get back to you. And then if you like uh, the video and would like to find out when a new one gets released, uh, subscribe to our channel. And then also, if you need even more prep, uh, head over to uh, gmat.magoosh.com where you can get even more GMAT prep. All right, be excellent to the universe, and I'll see you next week.